Are the New York Knicks planning to trade Quentin Grimes? The moves they have made this offseason make him expendable by the roster additions they have made. We're going to break that down in today's show. But first, I want to ask you guys this question. If you could only pick one of these three players to keep, who would it be? Type five for Emmanuel quickly, nine for R.J. Barrett, or six for Quentin Grimes. Yo, what up, Knicks fans? You're watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. You know, over the weekend, Josh Hart signed that four-year, $81 million contract extension, and it made me start to think, are the New York Knicks kind of showing their cards and showing their hand a little bit? Could they be looking to move on from Quentin Grimes? We're going to break that down in today's show. Let's start with this. Quentin Grimes, he was involved in those trade talks dating back to the NBA draft when Leon Rose and the Los Angeles Clippers were in contact about a potential Paul George trade. Remember, the Knicks, they did not pull the trigger on that deal because Paul George wanted a contract extension, but Quentin Grimes, the second year, now third year guard out of the University of Houston, he was a main piece in that trade. Then you look at the moves that the Knicks have made so far this summer. They signed Josh Hart to a four-year extension. He is now under contract for five years. They also signed Dante DiVincenzo in NBA free agency. And both of these players have somewhat of a similar game to Quentin Grimes. They are defenders. They can handle the ball as a secondary ball handler. They are very tenacious and scrappy players. They have a winning brand and winning DNA of style of play, as well as Dante DiVincenzo and Quentin Grimes are plus three-point shooters, and they can attack the rim and really get going in the fast break. So how many of the same players do the Knicks want to keep as Hart, DiVincenzo, and Grimes are pretty much the same type of archetype or play style of player? Also this, the Emmanuel Quickly contract extension is coming sooner rather than later. The last day that the New York Knicks can offer an extension to Quickly is right before the NBA season starts. And Ian Begley of SNY broke this down a little bit better than I can and said, the next order of business for New York, signing Emmanuel quickly to a contract extension. The deadline for quickly extension is the night before the start of the regular season. The Josh Hart extension should not have an impact on the Knicks' interest level in extending quickly. So you extend Josh Hart, you plan to extend Emmanuel quickly, and you don't think that either of those really cancel out the other, I guess you could say. I also think this is important to know, talking about the quickly extension. A player cannot be traded until six months after they sign a contract extend extension. So the Knicks, they can't trade Josh Hart for six months. If they sign Emmanuel quickly to a deal, they can't so trade him for six months. Why is that important? Because the NBA trade deadline this year is set for February 4th of 2024, which is sooner than six months from now. So Josh Hart cannot be traded in the 2023-2024 season. And if an Emmanuel quickly deal gets done, he cannot be traded during the season, which means the Knicks can only move a couple of those players. And some of those middle contracts and enticing pieces include R.J. Barrett, in Quentin Grimes. When you look at this roster right now, the Knicks somewhat have a log jam at the guard position, which isn't a bad problem. It's actually a good problem to have. The more good players you have, that is a good thing. And right now, the Knicks, they have a lot of guards. You got your starter at the one in Jalen Brunson. You got your backup in Emmanuel quickly. Your two guard to start is going to be Quentin Grimes. And your two guard that comes off the bench is going to be Dante DiVincenzo. Then you got RJ Barrett, and Josh Hart. So you have six guys right there for three positions, and all of those guys are expected to play a lot of minutes, and some of them make a lot of money. Barrett makes a lot of money. Hart makes a lot of money. Dante DiVincenzo just signed for $50 million, and Emmanuel quickly could get a deal of north of $20 million per year. So the question I have to ask is, are the Knicks really going to run the entire 2023-2024 season with those six players? We'll break that down more in a second. But first, make sure you are subscribed to New York Knicks Now by chatsportsyoutube.com slash Knicks TV. We're putting out videos every single day on the latest Knicks news and rumors. And if the Knicks make a move, we make a video. So go down right now and hit that big red sub button. My prediction for this upcoming year or next offseason, 
whenever it happens. We know Leon Rose has been prepping this roster and the assets that he has so that they can make a consolidation trade, so they could go all in for a superstar. And to make consolidation trade, you got to give up more than you are going to get. So my prediction is two of Emmanuel Quickly, R.J. Barrett, and Quentin Grimes are most likely going to be moved in a trade sometime in the near future. But which guys do I think, or which guys do I want the Knicks to keep more? Here are my rankings of the three when it comes to trade value. I factored in what I think their value is, as well as what I think their value is across the league. A reason I have Quentin Grimes number one is because he is entering just his third season in the NBA. I don't think that he is close to his ceiling, unlike the other two guys, and he could potentially be under team control for the next six seasons. Has two more years on his rookie contract and can be extended for four more years before he hits NBA free agency, as well as being a restricted free agent. Let's talk about the player and what he can do on the court. We saw him play 71 games this year for New York, and he was better than he was in his rookie season, upping his scoring total to almost 11 and a half while giving you three plus rebounds and two plus assists. But it's the efficiency that I love from the kid. 46.8% uh, from the deck, almost 39% from three. He is one of the best young three-point shooters in this league, while also being one of the best perimeter defenders in the association. But what I love the most out of Grimes is when he gets opportunities, when he gets more looks, when his number is called, he shows up. And I think this stat right here really illustrates that point. There were 25 games this year for Quentin Grimes where he had at least 10 shots. And in those 25 games, he averaged 18 points per game and shot 41% from three. I want to see more plays run from him, run for him. I want to see him be more aggressive. I want to see him pump fake off the line, rip through and get to the deck and either finish it high above the uh, rim or drop it off to Mitchell Robinson like we've seen him do time and time again. I want to see him be more aggressive as a scorer. I think his potential as a scorer is better than I think he showed in a lot of areas. But what I do know is he is going to be an elite defender in this league for quite some time, and the data is already showing that. To the, Let's take a look at this basketball index headshot plot, which factors in matchup difficulty as well as your DPM, which is your defensive plus minus, factors in how good your defense is with and without you on the court. Quentin Grimes, he had the number one matchup difficulty of any player in the NBA, meaning he drew the opposing team's number one offensive threat every single night. And how did he produce? Almost at league average. So you see right here, Quentin Grimes is being plotted as one of the best young defenders in the NBA, but really just one of the best defenders in the NBA. And I think he's only going to get better and better in that department. What he did against Jimmy Butler when he got put in the back end of the starting lineup in the playoffs was incredible. I still think about that play he had on him where he just ripped it away from him and took it the other way. Another reason I'm all in on Quentin Grimes is I don't think he's close to the player he's going to be when all is said and done. And I think him running with the select team of USA Basketball, getting to practice with the big dogs in Brunson and Hart and Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton and all those guys is going to up his level of play. He's going to take some tricks from those guys. I also love that he's working out with J.J. Redick this offseason. The dude is just a winning piece. I'm going to be very upset if the Knicks do trade him because I think he's someone that can be a starter on a championship team year in, in, year out. And I want to see him blossom into the player he is supposed to be with New York across his chest. We're going to talk about R.J. Barrett coming up in a second. But first, you guys should get hooked up with our awesome Knicks Now Real One t-shirts. We got the vintage, vintage Knicks blue one, but we've also brought the new black shirt into the mix. Go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks. This link will be clickable in the comments and description of today's video. The question you might be asking me right now is, Marsh, why do you hate RJ? Why on earth would you choose Quentin Grimes and Emmanuel Quickly over RJ Barrett? Well, I believe Grimes and Quickly are just better role players than RJ. And why does that matter? Because I believe for the Knicks to get to where they want to get to, to the top of the mountaintop, they need to add players better than Julius Randle and better than Jalen Brunson. And the position I think they need to do that at is the small forward position. Another reason, R.J. Barrett, he has the game and the player profile and the shot diet of an NBA superstar. Thing is, he is not a superstar. He doesn't do the little things. Here are some advanced analytics from R.J. this past year. We know he's not a catch, catch and shoot 
three-point guy, shooting less than league average and, quite frankly, a terrible percentage of 32.3% on catch and shoots. He's not creating his own shots from three either, shooting less than 20% on catch pull-up three-pointers. He got better around the basket this league this year, but still well below league average of 53.2% on less than 10 feet from the cup. Also, he doesn't give you much on the defensive end. Not even a deflection per night and not even a steal per night. Look, if you want to be a good role player in this league, you got to do some of those things better than what R.J. Barrett does. And I don't just want to shit on R.J. I'm a fan of him. Last summer, I was pounding the table saying to not trade him for Donovan Mitchell. While I was admit, well, admit I'm wrong on that one, I still believe in the kid. And I still believe he is going to have a good career. But when you look at the numbers of the worst Knicks three-man lineups, R.J. Barrett is featured in three of the top five. Him, Julius, and Isaiah Hartenstein, not good. R.J. Obi and Emmanuel Quickly, not good. R.J. Brunson and Julius, not good. And if you're R.J. Barrett and you don't fit well with the Knicks' top two options, you may not be on this team for long as they continue to try to upgrade this roster. I like R.J. I think he's going to get better. And he was solid this year for the Knicks, but I thought he took a step back, especially from three-point land and especially on the defensive end. Did he get better finishing around the basket? Yes, and I am happy and proud that he was able to do so. But you have to shoot better than 31% from three if you are a net negative defensive player and you play on the, on the wing in the NBA. I do like that he took his game to another level in the playoffs. He struggled in game one and game two against Cleveland. He struggled in game three against Miami, and he struggled in game six against Miami. But from game three against Cleveland to game five, Against Miami, that eight-game stretch, R.J. was great. 22.5 points per game, 49% from three of the field, and 38% from three. I see the potential. I see the talent. I just think at the end, end, end of the day, when I put on my GM hat, R.J. seems like the most likely trade chip. That's just what I think. It's what I believe. It's just... I don't want it to be true because I want to keep all the young players. I want to keep the kids. I want to see them reach their potential with New York across their chest. I just think if the Knicks are going to make a talent upgrade in the starting lineup, it's going to be at that small forward position, and R.J. Barrett is going to be the guy on the way out. I'll ask you one more time before we bounce on out of here. Pick one of these guys to keep. Let's say you can only have one of them next season. Who is it? Quickly, Barrett, Grimes, type the jersey number of the guy you want back in New York down below in the comments. As always, just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in to Knicks Now by Chat Sports. If you want to talk more hoops, hit me up on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore.